Dog walking has taken the internet by storm. It's the hip new business to start in 2023. And in this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about starting a six figure a year dog walking business. Twenty-three million households acquired a pet during the COVID-19 pandemic. Dog walking, dog sitting, dog care, any type is not going anywhere. People are starting to go back to work and they need people to take care of their animals. Now is the time to make money and capitalize on this opportunity while it lasts. In this video, I will specifically be talking about dog walking. Now, you can make plenty of money doing dog boarding, doggy daycare, etc. The list goes on. I'll leave that for another video. This is the model that I've been working on with dog walking that I've built out and I'm excited to share it with you. Let's start out with why this job might be for you. So personally, I'm a really active person. I love being outdoors. I hated sitting at a desk when I had to do it for work for a couple years. I actually come from a long line of blue collar workers, which I think is why it's in my blood. But I'm sure plenty of you out there are in the same boat. You went to school, you studied to get a white collar job, you're sitting at a desk and you hate it. This might be for you. We were not made to be sitting at a desk eight hours a day. I know there's a bunch of research now and articles all over the internet talking about how chairs are the new cigarettes, and I believe it. Being stagnant is quite possibly one of the worst things you can do for your body. Reason number two why you might want to start dog walking is because you love animals. I mean, I used to have coworkers that were humans, and now I have coworkers that are animals, and it's great. They just, we have a great day all day long. I never get any sass. It's amazing. And usually, the owner's also really cool. I mean, you don't have to do a lot to stand out. Like if you show up on time, you're clean and you're excited to meet their dog, people are blown away with how amazing you are. Trust me. So I think this conversation really begs the question of why are people not doing more active jobs after graduating college? And I thought a lot about this. And I think the answer is because typically, traditionally, these jobs have all been associated with lower wages. I mean, think about it. We have soccer coaches, park rangers, all these jobs are great, they're outdoors, but you're probably only making like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. But let me tell you that dog walking has completely changed all of that, and we're going to get into it right now. I believe the current pet care dynamic has truly changed that equation. I mean, I think you can be outdoors and work a job that you enjoy and make a really great wage. Other than dog walking being a really great job that is outdoors, it also teaches you really great skills that will benefit you in any career. I mean, it's a service-based industry that teaches you negotiation, client-facing interactions, and how to manage a small business finances. To sum it up, here are some reasons why dog walking might be for you. You want to be entrepreneurial and grow something that's your own. You want to be your own boss. You want to deal with dogs and not clients. And usually, like I said, the clients are super friendly and flexible. Now that we've covered whether or not you're cut out for the dog walking lifestyle, let's get into the core of what I want to talk about today, which is building the business. In this section, I want to cover three things, business plan, marketing, and costs. But before that, I think we have to understand the premise of dog walking and why it can be so lucrative. When I first started, I started doing private walks, which I'm grateful for, but that is not where you're going to make money. And I highly recommend that you don't start taking on private clients. At the beginning, it can be really tempting because it's the first sense of cash to know that your business is going to be you know, something in the future. But I would highly recommend that you only take on group walks. Group walks are going to be the most efficient use of your time. Let's think about it, right? If you can fit 40 dogs in a van and walk them all at once in one hour and you're charging $20 a dog, that's $800 an hour to walk dogs. So that's the really big point that you need to understand here is that group walks are the way you are going to make money dog walking. Sure, you can make a decent wage walking private walks eight hours a day for 35 to 40 bucks an hour, but where you really get to leverage your time is when you group them all together and that is going to create a huge income. Now that that's said, let's go through the business plan. Okay, I'm going to use all these numbers as hypotheticals and I really, really suggest that you look at the competition in your area to see how to price it. But here's the plan that I used. Feel free to copy it if the market in your area allows for it. Okay, so we're gonna work backwards at this number of $100,000 a year, right? To get to $100,000 a year, you need to walk 20 dogs a day at $20 per dog. 
So that's $400 per day. All you need to do to make $100,000 a year in gross income is to make $400 a day. So that's four group walks of five dogs a piece or five group walks of four dogs a piece. And it, the way the math works on that is $400 a day over the course of five days, if you only want to work five days, you can work more. That's what's great about this. So over that five day period, that's $2,000 a week. Let's say you take two weeks off. So there's 50 weeks in a year that you're working times that 2000, that's $100,000 right there. Now you might say 20 dogs a day. That sounds like a lot, Sam. Yes. But if they're in small groups, of four or five, you only have to do four or five hours of walking. And technically, you can make these sessions 45 minutes and or 30 minutes, whatever you think is right for your area. But like I said, I would really do the research, try to understand the market. So if people in your area are charging $30 for a half an hour private walk, then maybe a comparable thing to do would be $25 for a 45 minute walk. So you take down the price and increase the length. That is more attractive than the private walk at $30. So you want to create an incentive for the client to choose a group walk rather than a private walk. And I can go over a list of why you would want to do these things and you'll see it later in, in the material that we have, but you want to really make a compelling argument that group walks are the way to go. For you, for the client, everybody wins with a group walk, and I'll explain that in a second. So now that we understand exactly how we're getting to that number, let's talk about more of the logistics around it that are really important. For this example, let's make it super clear. For the 20 dogs that you're walking a day, you're charging $20. How you're breaking that up is you're going to do four walks, 45 minutes a piece, with five dogs per walk. Now, the most important thing here is that all the dogs live in somewhat proximity to each other. So ideally, they'd be all in the same block, but let's talk about that right now. So let's do an example here. Maybe I can put something up here, but you want dogs that are all within the same block or maybe a block apart because that's where you're going to save time. If you have two dogs that are maybe four or five blocks apart, that wastes more of your time and it's not as efficient. So it's super simple, but it might not be super clear why this is the case, but this time is really important to you and it'll compound as you have more and more walks each day, right? So you wanna group the dogs that live next to each other together. And I'll explain how to do that in a minute. So in this scenario, you want all the dogs together, right? So let's say there's one in every block for five blocks. You're gonna pick that first dog up at the beginning of the walk and that's the first dog you're gonna drop off at the end of the walk. And then at the end of the walk, you're just gonna go down the line and drop off the dogs. So every dog is getting a 45 minute walk, but you're taking an hour time slot to do that because maybe you drop it off and talk to the owner a little bit, and then you go to the next house, and then you go to the next house, and they're all a block apart. That's how that whole 45 minute walk will turn into an hour because you have the five dogs that you need to drop. So that's why it's imperative to have these dogs all together. And that leads us to the next step, which is marketing, okay? Specifically, the first step of the next step, flyering. Go on any website online. I used Vistaprint. Go online, Jimmy's Dog Walks, $20 an hour, and give all the information. I'm gonna put mine up here. You could literally just copy this if you don't wanna take the time to change it. A couple of things really important to include on this flyer are obviously the price, the length of the walk, and then you also want to include a little blurb in there of why it's beneficial for the dog owner to consider group walks. It saves them money, it is a better way for their dogs to interact, they learn better in a group. You want to add all these positive things to encourage them to do group walks and not private walks because that's in your benefit as well. You can also put a little blurb about yourself saying, hey, this is me, I left my desk job to pursue a dream of walking dogs. That's what I put. I think hopefully it gets some people, you know, the heartstrings, but anyway. Another thing you might want to consider here is A-B testing your pricing. So. What this would mean is making two sets of flyers, one with $20 and one with $25, and putting them in two separate areas. You might be surprised. You might initially think that maybe the $20 set of flyers would attract more people, but who knows? If you have a wealthier clientele, they might be more willing to pay more, and you might get more of a market with the $25. You just need to figure out that for your market area. 
So another thing that's really important here is the closer you are to your location, your apartment, your house is going to be better for you, right? Because then you don't have to spend money on gas. But on the other hand, let's say maybe there's no market where you live, or maybe you can just go somewhere else, drive 10 minutes, and you can get a better market with wealthier clients. So you might have to spend a little bit in gas to go somewhere else, but ideally this would be done on your block on your street because then you could just walk there and you really have no cost associated with a car or gas or any type of transportation. Okay, so once you've done the flyering, you could do some business cards as well. They're not really necessary. Uh, flyers I think are fine unless you're meeting people at dog parks, but I really wouldn't want to give people your card there because then they're going to call you for privates and you really want to make sure that it's like i said it's really important that all these people live near each other that's the most important part so i would maybe refrain from just handing out your card randomly until you like really need a clientele maybe you can't get a clientele for, and you've tried everything then okay try that and maybe you can do some privates for a good rate. The next step here would be creating your website. Now, I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to create a website. Uh, there's plenty of people online that have amazing ones. Nate O'Brien, one of my favorite YouTubers, has a great thing. I'll link it here. It's awesome. It's exactly how I just copied it exactly what he did and I made my website. Probably took about 15 hours. I did it over the course of a weekend. But yeah, highly recommend you set up a website. It just looks a little bit more professional and people are actually really happy to see a website and impressed by it. So you could put some pictures about yourself, show them who you are. It really makes them trust you a lot more. So highly recommend. It brings a lot of legitimacy, even if it's not 100% real to your business. If people see, oh, you have a website, you know, you're, you're legit. Don't have to do it right away, but it should be something you work towards. Also something that I want to mention here, I just had to do this and you really need to check with your city, but I had to get a license with LA City for my business. It was free, uh, but you do have to get it because if not, they'll tax you and penalize you for doing so just make sure wherever you live that you have a license to provide the services that you're providing in your city or county that brings us to section number three where we are going to talk about the costs associated with running this dog walking business okay so for marketing for business cards and flyers don't spend more than 100 bucks for your first round you might need to tweak things really affordable 100 bucks on vistaprint they'll be here next week same thing with your website. I think the initial rate for my website was $32 a year plus some extra things like backing up the website. You should always back up the website. You'll see that in Nate's video. But back up the website, mine went down the other day and I was able to just really easily recover it and it's only $2.09 a month. So highly recommend you do that. But yeah, $32 for the first year, $8 a month running and then the next year I'm gonna have to pay $102 I think for the annual fee. But totally worth it. Like I said, it legitimizes your business. Some things that are really imperative to dog walking. The first thing is a really great pair of shoes. You're probably going to need to buy a couple of these per year. I'm probably going to go through about four this year and they're 150 bucks a piece. So that's $600. That's a really important expense. You want to buy the best quality shoes for you. I really like Hoka. Brooks are really good as well. And uh, just really whatever fits you is best because you're going to be walking in these all the time. I mean, I do anywhere from 10 to 15 miles a day and if you're going to do you know four walks it really adds up poop bags poop bags are really important some clients are going to have them for you but i would really just say provide your own it looks more professional um, so those anywhere from probably like 50 to 100 bucks a year super affordable for all the poop that you'll be picking up uh, and the next one is the fanny pack so you could put that in have everything real close to you i really like it they have ones with doggy bag holders it's really easy to pull out um, so yeah those are like 20 bucks and that should last you a long time rain gear depending on where you live this is a hard one I live in LA so haven't had too much rain but as of recent there's been a little bit so I just bought like a rain poncho and pants it's 20 bucks 24 bucks on Amazon and then I also bought like an $80 pair of hiking boots because that is really important. You don't want to get your feet wet. That sucks. I'll leave all these items that I use down in the description. Feel free to use the links down there if you'd like to buy them. It'll help out the channel a little bit. And yeah, I appreciate your support on that. Another one that's in here that I mentioned a little bit earlier, depending on how much you're driving, you might have to pay for gas. So I spend about 200 bucks a week on gas because I drive a lot. But hopefully you don't have to do any of that and you could do this all in your neighborhood and save money on gas. But yeah, so the total excluding gas for all those core essentials comes out to literally $1,000 a year. 
that's all you need for the entire business to make a hundred grand is a thousand dollars a year. Also, something you might want to consider is buying leashes. I only have one or two actually, and I don't use them only if somebody forgets their leash and I or I can't find the leash at the people's house. But generally, the pet owners are going to provide the leashes for you. A couple other things that are really important to talk about also are insurance. So I am self-employed. I have to buy my own health care. And depending on what you want and how old you are, I live in California, anywhere from like 60 for the lowest level of care to 500, 600 bucks a month, depending on what you want to buy and your age. Look into that, be very careful. It can be very expensive. So just be mindful to look into that. Another thing I'm going to buy this year is disability insurance. If I were to break my leg or if I were to do anything that would put me out in the short term, I would want my wages covered. I don't know exactly what the price is on this. I have to look it up and obviously it's going to vary from provider to provider and area to area. But look into that, it might be something you want to do if you're gonna think about doing this long term. So yeah, all the bare essentials for this are $1,000 a year, right? The poop bags, the rain gear, the shoes. It's really affordable to start this business. You could start tomorrow. With that said, let's go over some of the pros and cons and kind of wrap this video up. Some of the pros, like we've already discussed about dog walking, are you're outdoors, you're staying in great cardiovascular health, you get to spend time with dogs, and really the opportunity is limitless here. The sky is really the limit with this. I only outlined a $100,000 a year dog walking business here, but if you just scale this to five, six, seven hours a day and you bring on multiple people, I mean, the opportunity is endless here. And then once you have enough cash saved up, maybe you could open a boarding facility. There's so much you can do in the pet care industry right now and it's booming. So really look into this as an opportunity. I also felt like I needed to address some of the cons and it wouldn't be fair to exclude those. Obviously, I'm very pro dog walking, as you can tell, but there's probably a couple of things that we should address before you really just quit your job today and, and start dog walking. There's a risk, right? When you're walking around, you could break a leg. There's a lot of injury that could happen potentially, but if you're smart about it, it's really mitigated. But that's why I would say you could buy disability insurance to prevent that. The sun is something that you're going to be in, so if you're very fair skin, you might want to wear sunscreen. The weather is poor sometimes. I'm walking in the rain, and you know what? I love it. It's better than sitting at a desk. No paid vacation, right? Like I said, I, I kind of talked about that earlier. Let's say you take two weeks of vacation. You're not getting paid. So you're only working 50 weeks a year, but those other two weeks are not going to be paid. So if you go on vacation, you'll have to spend your own money that's not coming out of you know your sick or vacation time. So be aware of that. Personal health care and 401k, we talked about that. I have to purchase my own personal health care and I don't have a 401k. I have my own Roth IRA because that's going to be more tax beneficial in the future anyway, but that's a whole nother video. Uh, but yeah, so I don't have an employer match. If you're looking for that, then this is probably not the job for you. And the last one here that I'll talk about is picking up poop. I've stepped in poop. I've had it on my hands. I mean, if you're scared about picking up poop, then this is not the job for you either. But like I said, these cons in the grand scheme of things, I think are just so minuscule to the pros of being outside and being active and walking all day could probably increase your lifespan. I'm not a doctor. Don't take that as medical advice. But there's just so many pros and only a few cons, but the cons obviously are, are pretty weighty. So I would really consider this. Don't just jump into it. Think about what you want to do with your life and if this is really for you. I'm so happy for you and excited because it's probably one of the best decisions I made in my life to be active and outdoors. I feel like I'm just overall so much more of a happy person. I was never meant to sit behind a desk all day in a dark office. So I'm really happy and I hope you will be as too. Thank you so much for watching the video. I put a lot of effort into this one and I'm going to continue creating content around dog walking, side hustles, entrepreneurship, finance, lifestyle. If you enjoyed the content, please give me a subscribe comment down below. Would love to hear what you guys want to see next. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon. Peace.